Alright, so in this video, um, I'm going to be giving a demonstration of the reverse bit magic technique um, a little bit more in detail than the previous videos that I've shown of its uses, um, because reverse bit magic is a somewhat complicated technique in uh, how it internally works, and I think this video will be beneficial for helping more people understand it better. So I've got Skyward Sword loaded up in Dolphin here, uh, and because I have it loaded up in Dolphin, uh, I can use this handy tool called the Dolphin Memory Engine, developed by Aldolaro, uh, which allows us to see the memory of the game in time, or in real time, as we play through it. So this specific part of memory that we have loaded up here, um, this address at 85A AB50, uh, this is what's known as the currently loaded scene flags, right? So a scene flag in Skyward Sword and other Zelda games is basically uh, any sort of permanent or persistent environment change that we can sort of apply to any given area. So, um, for instance, like pushing down logs in Farron Woods, um, all of those logs that we push down are permanent environment changes. Once the log is pushed down, that's like the final state that the log can be in, so the game has to save that somewhere. And when you push down a log in Farron Woods, it saves that data initially to this address that we have loaded up, right? Because this address, as I said, are the currently loaded scene flags, or is, English. Anyway. Uh, so, since these currently loaded scene flags only apply to the current area, uh, the game actually has to switch scene flags whenever it switches to another area. So, right now, we're in Lake Floria, so we have the Lake Floria uh, scene flags loaded. However, if I reveal this other memory address up here, uh, this memory address at 8095.6f88, um, these are the scene flags for the Ancient Cistern, so we'll see that when I go into the Ancient Cistern, uh, the game is going to grab those scene flags and take them into the uh, lower address space over here, so it just copied them over uh, for use in the Ancient Cistern. Uh, so, just as a demonstration of a scene flag change, um, there's this lever that's on the wall over here, and when we pull down this lever, it's going to change one of the values at this address, as we can see right there. So the value got both reflected, or got changed, I should say, um, in both the currently loaded scene flags and in the uh, saved scene flag space for the ancient cistern, which is the higher address. And this is... Um, the com or this is the part of memory that we're manipulating during the uh, reverse bit magic uh, like glitch process because we're essentially taking scene flags from one map, that one map being Skyloft, and applying those changes to a different map, which in this example is going to be the Ancient Cistern. So if we go over to this different save state that I have, uh, we have a small key and we can unlock this door right here. Now. Um, Unlocking this door is going to specifically change the scene flag here in the F column uh, that we can see on the uh, lower address space. It's going to change this 0 to be a 2 once we open it. So just like this. And because we're on the Ancient Cistern map, the change gets reflected to the saved Ancient Cistern scene flags as well. Now, because the uh, scene flag space and the lower address right here, uh, because it's used whenever you load a new map, uh, you're setting scene flags at this address no matter what map you're on, which means that when you set scene flags on different maps, they could potentially set the exact same address in memory, just in, you know, a different context because it's a different map. So, for example, if we go to a save state that I have on Skyloft right here, uh, and we pick up this Gratitude Crystal, we'll also notice that the address at uh, column F is going to change to be a 2 also, uh, as we can see. Of course, uh, the top address didn't change because that address is still keeping track of the ancient cistern flags on this uh, particular save file, which is different from the one that I just previously had loaded. 
So because both this Gratitude Crystal and unlocking the Locked Door and Ancient Cistern both changed the same address within the currently loaded scene flags on the lower address right here, uh, this is essentially what we're taking advantage of when we're doing reverse bit magic uh, during Back in Time. And the way this works is that Back in Time has uh, some very specific properties to it regarding the current scene flag space. Uh, in Back in Time, and really any time you're on the title screen, the current scene flag space will get updated whenever you simply select a file. Right? So we can see that when I selected file 2, uh, the scene flag space changed to whatever the scene flags are on the map that were saved on for file 2. Right? And then also if I select file 3, the scene flags will change again to whatever file 3's scene flags are on the map saved, which in this case is Skyloft. So um, the way this was like originally theorized and discovered was, um, I was like, okay, well... If we can update the scene flag space here when we select a file and then make a persistent or a permanent change with a scene flag on Skyloft, like picking up the Gratitude Crystal, then does this get applied to our file when we load up the file and press start? And the answer, uh, at least in this case, is no, because when we press start to load up the file, uh, it, like, I guess the game does some sanity checking because it seems to re-grab um, whatever the scene flags were at the place that it saved at in the saved scene flag data, right? Since, as we can see right here, uh, picking up the Gratitude Crystal changed the F column value here um, in the currently loaded scene flags, but it did not change it up here in the um, space where the Ancient Cistern scene flags are saved on this file. So when we start the file, uh, the 2 is going to go back to being a 0. And obviously when we load up the Ancient Cistern, then it's just going to be how it was when we had saved in it previously. However... Um, oops, that's the wrong save state. If we start our file, and then grab the Gratitude Crystal after... Uh, the game attempts to retake whatever the Ancient Cistern scene flags are uh, when we start the file, then, as we can see here, uh, the scene flag change is going to stay through the loading process and well into the Ancient Cistern. However, the door is going to still be locked here right now, uh, since the change is still not reflected um, in the upper address space right here. Uh, so we're thinking like, okay, well, is there some way we can get that change to the upper address space so that uh, we can actually make this change be a thing that is properly applied to this dungeon, or this map in this case? And the answer is yes. Um, I'm just going to go over and defeat this shoe over here. It's not in our way. So um, on this save file, we haven't pulled down this lever yet. Um, but you'll see that when we pull down this lever, which as we saw previously is a scene change, or a scene flag change, I should say, um, both this lever and the value that we set during the loading process in back in time while we were loading this file, they're both going to be reflected into the upper address space here, just like this. And so because of this, now um, the value in the F column being changed to a 2 reflects the fact that the game thinks this door should be unlocked. So if I swim over here, uh, the lock is still here, but even though I don't have a small key, we still have the option of opening the door. Um, if we were to reload the area, then the lock would actually disappear. But even though the lock is here, we can still open the door. And so, yeah, then we get that kind of funny cutscene. So, uh, this is just one demonstration of how uh, reverse bit magic works in Skyward Sword. Um, I hope this sort of clears things up as to how uh, this glitch works for all the applications that we use it for. They all pretty much work just like this. Um, we load a file while we're in back in time. We set a scene flag change during the transition of while we're fading out to the new area. And then we have to make a different scene flag change in the current area so that we can 
get the scene flag changed that isn't saved yet to properly be saved in uh, the upper address where the scene flag changes are stored. Right? Because again, the lower address that we're seeing here is only for the current scene flag space, and it changes depending on what map you're loaded into, if that all makes sense, right? Uh, so, uh, in addition to all of that, we can, or like we as the Skyward Sword community have mapped out um, what all of these values, uh, or what all of the scene flags in each area happen to correspond to as best as we can, right? So these are all of the scene flags that uh, we can set while we're on Skyloft, and then we have different tabs down here for all the other different areas um, of the game, including all the dungeons, or really anywhere that has a separate scene flag space allocated for it. Uh, so any of these values that are in green are ones that we can activate during back in time. And this is important because if we can't activate the value or the scene flag change during back in time, then it's not something that we can apply to a file, unfortunately, which is what these red ones are. And then we also have different colors here, which are for very like specific cases of things that are like of note with regards to scene flag changing. Uh, so yeah, anything on these other sheets that's green is something that we can technically set uh, with reverse bit magic. And this sheet will be linked in the video description if you guys uh, want to look at it. But uh, yeah, I hope that you have a better understanding of uh, how reverse bit magic works now. Um, it's essentially just, we make a, you know, if we go back here uh, to Dolphin, this other scene that I have on OBS, Right, so if we make a change to the current scene flag space um, that we can see here where my mouse is, and then we can uh, successfully reflect that change uh, to the saved scene flag space for whatever map that we're on, then we can permanently apply that change to a file um, and then have whatever useful effects it may give us or whatnot. So, uh, yeah. That pretty much concludes this. Again, I hope it was useful and it makes more sense to some of you as to why this works. And, uh, yeah. Maybe we'll explore other things next time. I don't know. I just wanted to make this because um, I felt like it would be helpful to do, like, a hands-on demonstration for it. So, yeah. See you guys later.